What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. It is the first show of the year. Today, we'll be taking a macro look at what's going on for 2022, starting off over here with the Bitcoin price chart. We'll peek, of course, over there at the altcoin market. But I thought it would be a great opportunity as the first show of the year to take a look at the macro environment that we're heading into 2022 with. I spent some time yesterday over here on Twitter really sharing a lot of different stuff. I was actually smoking a brisket yesterday, but was sharing a lot of different things from a macro perspective of what was going on over here in the market with the Bitcoin dominance, what was going on with Elon Musk, what was going on with currency devaluation and gold, and something interesting that was shared by Kathy Wood at the end of last year, kind of giving a macro perspective of what, what her outlook is for 2022. And I thought it was very interesting and in line with a lot of the things that I've been saying over here on this YouTube channel. So we'll dive deep into that stuff. But first, we'll take a peek over here at the Bitcoin price chart. Bitcoin was actually pretty tame throughout the weekend and tame going into 2022. The prices remained relatively flat for the last three to four days. Yesterday, as I was smoking my brisket, I spent a lot of time on Twitter and a lot of time watching YouTube videos and researching what's going on out there and recognize what a lot of people are saying about Bitcoin right now. Now, there's a lot of different perspectives out there on whether or not Bitcoin's going to $250,000, whether it's going to $100,000. The leader of El Salvador, which I have to say, his uh, little avatar here looks awfully familiar, believes that Bitcoin will will hit $100,000 in 2022, and that his tweet will age well. I also noticed a lot of stuff still out there looking for $140,000, $200,000, $250,000 Bitcoin in 2022. We all know where I stand. The market cap of Bitcoin has hit a 4.236 extension in these circumstances where you have a bubble followed by a crash, a retrace, a reaccumulation, and then a breakout to a 4.236. It's not in Bitcoin's favor to go on and break much higher. In most circumstances like this, it usually breaks down and goes down even lower than where this bottom was in here. If we were to do what we've done in previous Bitcoin bear markets, a reasonable place would be right back down in here, which is going to be about $13,000 for Bitcoin. So if we're going to see something similar to what we've seen happen in the past, about $13,000. If we follow this structure, which is like what we saw with Ethereum back in 2017, big rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, 4.236 extension, then it went all the way back down. You can see it did make a pit stop down in here, but it wasn't the end for Ethereum. It still went down below this price level over here. And so that's the headwinds that Bitcoin is facing heading into 2022. But the story of 2021 was really all about inflation, right? Bitcoin being an inflation hedge asset. We saw the Wall Street bet stuff. We saw the silver squeeze None of them had any impact on the inflation hedge narrative assets, right? Bitcoin had a washing machine 2021. Silver had a washing machine 2021. Meanwhile, inflation was soaring during 2021, right? And so what we really saw happen with Bitcoin is that we had the C19 sell-off. We started printing money tremendously and people anticipated inflation to be coming. So we saw Bitcoin rise based on the anticipation of inflation. The inflation arrived. So buy the rumor, sell the news. It's just been a washing machine for Bitcoin and the exact same story over here for silver, right? We saw it rise from $11 all the way up to $30 and peaked out back here in August of 2020 and then washing machine ever since then, right? Even though the inflation all came in here, it was the anticipation of the inflation that led the price to rise. And so I keep coming back to this Kathy Wood write up over here on my screen because the big question is, is there further inflation coming down the pike for 2022? Do we have a lot of inflation that's heading our way? Or are we seeing a bunch of macro elements that are telling us that deflationary pressures are building up? One of the things I've shown on my channel many times has been the container rates for shipping from China to the rest of the parts of the world, whether it's to Europe or to the United States or anywhere really, just that container rates have been exceptionally high and they really started at the beginning of 2021 and really cranked out through Q3 in 2021 as well. And this is actually an industry that I've worked in for my career, understanding the logistics of containers and shipping and timeframes and how long things take to get across the world and how long they sit at port, the complications of picking things up at ports, 
getting them palletized, getting them on trucks, getting them shipped out and distributed throughout the country. And that while we were looking at these rates soaring, that this would lead to inflation because people are going to have to add the cost of these shipping containers and these shipping fees to the end consumer product. And that what we were witnessing was a big surge of people trying to get inventory in for the holidays. Now the big question is, now that we're in 2022, we're beyond the holidays, and I'll make kind of a visualization on what it looks like, right? You're going to get your typical retail demand coming through here. But then as we get near the end of the year, right in here in November and in December, preparing for the holidays, typically what ends up happening is there's this big surge up in here in consumer consumption and demand as we head into the holidays. And then it starts to trail off heading into the new year. But what we witnessed happen this year is that there was the typical stuff but it started off earlier and it didn't peak as high, but it was more so longer and not as high. So demand, but for a longer period of time, which started much earlier back here in September, rather than waiting typically till closer to the end of the year. So while all this demand for fighting over container ships to get inventory in stock to meet that demand, the demand had started earlier and the demand was less as we got there near the end of the year, as most shoppers had already done a lot of their shopping earlier in the year, and the holiday rush was less than what would have been anticipated compared to what we saw in 2020. In addition, a lot of people making the assumption that performance was going to be as good in 2021 as it was in 2020. However, there was an economic difference of 2021 compared to 2020. In that in 2020, many unemployed people were making more money being unemployed than they were at their actual jobs. And everybody in the United States was getting stimulus checks, regardless of what their employment status was. And not small amounts, thousands of dollars in stimulus checks. So we had a different macro environment this year than we did last year. In addition, the demand curve was different because consumers were fearful of inflation and getting a lot of their shopping done much earlier than later. And so if you're saying, why are we not talking about crypto charts right now? Do the TA blockchain backer. We will get there. But I think it's important to understand what we're going into in 2022 compared to what 2020 was and to what 2021 was. And so let's read what Kathy Wood had to say here. And first of all, I'll say I'm not a Kathy Wood super fan. I've seen Kathy Wood get things right. I've seen Kathy Wood get things wrong. But I will listen to her read out this data. Today, we learned that in November, retail inventories rose more than 2%, the fastest pace since the 90s, while imports jumped 4.7% and exports dropped 2%. Moreover, real consumption, including services, was flat and the savings rate dropped to 6.9% below pre-C19 levels. She went on to say, as measured by the University of Michigan, which I believe is the best monthly survey on the consumer, sentiment during November and December dropped to a level last seen at the worst of the C19 crisis in 2020. In this context, the percent changes listed above make sense. These percent changes are not annualized, so multiply them by 12 to understand the drama unfolding here in the U.S. Both businesses and consumers seem to have overreacted to supply chain bottlenecks by building inventories of goods while government stimulus was flowing freely. These developments are not new. During the third quarter, real GDP was up a little more than 2% at an annual rate, but real final sales, consumption, investing excluding inventories, government spending, net exports were flat. That 2% growth was all in inventories. This buildup, along with mergers and acquisitions and initial public offers, remind me of Y2K, which if you don't know, people thought the world was coming to an end at the end of 1999 as we were going into the year 2000. People thought all of our computers would not be able to handle the date switch over from one to two. <laughs> This time, the excesses are likely to be in industries that technology will disrupt, energy, financial services, and transportation, among others. If so, this disruption will be the flip side of Y2K completing the circle. In our view, fears of inflation will give way to confusion and fears of recession during the next three to six months. If so, the rapid growth rates of truly innovative companies, many of their equities malaligned this year, should be rewarded handsomely. And so this is interesting to read right here. In our view, fears of inflation will give way to confusion and fears of recession during the next three to six months. 
saying that she believes that people will not be so fearful of inflation any longer. And so I keep pointing to containers, what's happening with shipping costs, and the supply and demand curve that happened there at the end of 2021 heading into the holidays, because what we saw was a massive inventories being purchased by companies in order to supply consumers. And consumers were doing a lot of their shopping much earlier. So was the timing off between the two? We know that there's record numbers of cargo ships sitting offshore. How much of the inventory did not make it in time to satisfy the bell curve of consumer demand? And how much extra inventory is still sitting on those boats, sitting in warehouses, and hasn't been purchased by consumers, while consumers have exceptionally low sentiment? So the general argument that Kathy is making is that too much inventory was purchased by companies and they're sitting on a ton of inventory right now. At the same time, consumers are sitting on a ton of inventory because they panic bought, worried about inflation, and we're going into this new year with consumers already having a stockpile of inventory. And at the same time, companies also have an excessive amount of inventory and that there's just not going to be the demand from the consumer to purchase all this excess inventory that companies have. So companies are gonna have excessive supply, far more than usual, and at the exact same time, consumers are gonna have lower demand. And the savings rate of the consumer is at 6.9%, which is below pre-C19 levels. So the consumer also doesn't have a ton of money that they were getting for free in 2020. And we can see that represented over here that the savings rate back in November and December of 2019 was about 7 to 8 percent. And then when C19 struck, you could see we got to 13, fired all the way up to 33.8 percent, a bunch of free money pouring in. And that the savings rate held above 13 percent for the majority of 2020 and heading into 2021, topping out in March at 26.6 percent. And now that we have fallen all the way back down and we are below where we were at before C19. Even the lowest there in 2019 was 7%. So the savings rate is even lower than what it was before. So what do we know about back in here? We know that people had a lot of money because the personal savings rate was incredibly high. They had excess cash. And at the same time, we were printing a tremendous amount of money anticipating that inflation would be coming. But now the stimulus checks have stopped. The excess unemployment has stopped. The holiday season has stopped. It's passed us by. While sentiment is as low as it was during the C-19 time period, and personal savings has dropped to 6.9%. So do we have the same formula going on over here for Bitcoin as an inflation hedge asset to perform well, given the things we've seen play out over the course of the last two years? And we can see that a lot of the elements from a macro perspective are very different from what they were like when Bitcoin took off and ran up. Also, back in 2020, in June of 2020, was the infamous statement by Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, saying, we're not even thinking about thinking about raising rates. And now, as we head into 2022, the Federal Reserve has a different stance, right? They're winding down pandemic support, looking at interest rate hikes coming as soon as March, which is just two months away. So that's very different than the market getting reassurance that there's no rate hikes anytime in the near future. We're not even thinking about thinking about it to saying, hey, look, it looks likely that they'll come as soon as March of this year, two months away from right now. So take into account all of these things we've just talked about, right? Personal savings is low. All of these shipping containers, all of this excess inventory, interest rate hikes coming from the Federal Reserve, none of these things point towards more inflation. If anything, they point towards deflation. And as you can see, Kathy Wood makes this statement right here saying, in our view, fears of inflation will give way to confusion and fears of recession during the next three to six months. If so, the rapid growth rates of truly innovative companies, many of their equities maligned this year, should be rewarded handsomely. And so to tie that back into crypto, if you don't know, the stock market has experienced a very similar phenomenon within it as the cryptocurrency market has experienced, in which that there's been some large caps that have really risen the whole boat, bringing the indexes up. 
but the vast majority of assets within the stock market had underperforming years, just like what we've seen over here in crypto, where there's just a few that did big things like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Solana, but that the vast majority of the market has not done anything of significance during the year of 2021, and that this exact same phenomenon occurred over there in the stock market. And that she believes that the fears of inflation will give way to confusion and fears of recession, and that innovative companies, which had their equities maligned in 2021, will see rapid growth rates and be rewarded handsomely coming into 2022. And that is my belief as well over here in the cryptocurrency market. I believe there are just a few assets that have risen the whole boat, but for the most part, the majority of this market is maligned with where it should be at. We have way too many good assets that are sitting very low, whereas just a select handful that control a majority of the market cap have run up really high. And that what we've seen historically in previous bull runs is once those come to an end for those big caps, all that money flushes and rotates to the rest of the market and that we haven't seen that happen yet over here in the altcoin market which i think anybody who has spent any serious time researching the cryptocurrency market and the assets of it that xrp has typically always been number three and occasionally number two bypassing ethereum and even though it has issues with the sec currently still just a head scratcher on how it could still be so low when the rest of the market is so high but that obviously with how high the market cap is of the total altcoin market cap of the total market cap of Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's a clear misalignment here with XRP's price in relation to the rest of the market. And while Kathy does say rapid growth rates of truly innovative companies, I also think of that when it comes to digital assets and that many digital assets are maligned this year and should be rewarded handsomely. And that is also my thought process as we head into 2022, is that there is a misalignment happening here in the market, and that's what I'm looking for going into 2022, is the reverting back to the mean of the rest of the market, and that things that are way overpriced will come down, and things that are way underpriced will go up for the market to get to its fair area. And that I agree with this, that fear of inflation will give way to confusion and fears of recession and that the narrative of inflation is going to be a hard pitch for Bitcoin heading into 2022 with an overwhelming amount of supply, a lack of savings for consumers, along with poor sentiment and consumers already having a buildup of inventories, along with the Federal Reserve increasing interest rates and reducing its tapering that the elements for inflation are not there right now, but the elements for deflation are there. And I saw Elon Musk post this over here on Twitter yesterday. He said, let's make the roaring 20s happen. And if you've never studied the Great Depression, well, you know, one of the most important things to study, if you're going to study the Great Depression, is to study what the roaring 20s were, because it was the roaring 20s that led to excesses that eventually led to the Great Depression and huge market crash that happened. And we could see that in the 1920s, we could see that the Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 506% during the 1920s. And that I've presented the case that what we're doing over in the Dow Jones right now is incredibly similar to what happened during the Roaring Twenties. And where we would be right now would be like 1928, 1929, as we head in for that final move and to see that the Dow Jones is in a very large bubble and that based off the bottom of the great financial crisis to get up 506 percent or so well you just don't have very much further up to go it's only nine percent away to get to that 506 percent with us currently being up right now 457 percent since this time period just you know 12 13 years ago and that the roaring 20s for us has really actually been the roaring teens and that while he may say, let's make the Roaring Twenties happen, just five days ago, he was asked when he thinks the next recession will be. And his prediction is to say that the spring or summer of this year and not later than 2023. And so while this is the first video of 2022, and, and probably the way this has been portrayed so far is that it's all gloom and doom, but that's not really the case. The reality is we just have to be aware of where we're at. We know that the Dow Jones is merely 9% away from the 
height of the run that happened in the Roaring Twenties. The good news is, if it repeats that, well, typically it leads to some type of blow-off top in the stock market. Historically, cryptocurrencies have a tendency to follow the stock market, so it would lead to some type of excitement. We see a misalignment of what has happened with a lot of the altcoin market in relation to the leaders, such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. We have a lot of leaders over there in the stock market, right? You have Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, but you have a lot of other stuff that hasn't done anything like Ford Motor Company, right? I'm shocked that Ford is not a much bigger, bigger asset right now. And I own Ford, but there's clearly something going on in this market as Ford is still in like a 23 year long bear market. But I think we'll see similarities of things that we've seen happen in crypto also happen in the stock market. My predictions a couple of years ago would be that we would see companies like GameStop, GE, and Ford all have big mega like altcoin style runs. And we did get that in GameStop, which is crazy because it was just a theory. I've never seen it actually happen in the stock market like that before, but it did precisely that. It was like an altcoin. But if history is any indicator of what happens when these tops come in for indexes and for market cycles, it's that there is a lot of volatility. There's a lot of craziness. Underperformers can catch up very quickly. And that the Dow Jones has still not quite hit the height of the fractal. It also hasn't hit the percentages and we don't have any type of interest rate hikes happening yet. But as the year progresses, these charts will progress as well. And if these things play out like how they've played out before, it doesn't seem unreasonable to think that in 2022, we have the blow off top happen over here in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, followed by the crash afterwards. It doesn't seem unreasonable that we see the altcoin market explode to catch up with the, the leaders of the market. Of course, what it all points to for 2023 and 2024 is not the best times in the world, right? If these things were to play out like this, and if Bitcoin were to truly do something like that. But it's only January right now. It's not the spring or the summer. It's not 2023. And rapid growth rates for things that have been maligned this year should be rewarded handsomely. And for me, that's the mindset I'm going into 2022 with, that there's still going to be an exciting moment that comes in the market. We do know that when tops come in for the market after that one final push, if Bitcoin's top truly is in, if this altcoin market does truly push up, that is the end. Dark times are ahead next. But you know what? There's a really exciting time that comes prior to that. And it's going to be about locking in some gains heading into that moment, right? And so right now, as we head into 2022, it's about looking forward to the opportunities for for something amazing to happen over here in the stock market and for that to transition into the cryptocurrency market. And then when the time comes of things, if they turn around and start heading south, as Elon believes they will, and as I think is reasonable as well, we'll approach that when we get there. But it seems that heading into 2022, the narrative is no longer going to be about inflation, but that the narrative will change this year and be more focused on innovative technologies and companies that have not had a fair value price attached to them and that many things are overvalued and many things are undervalued and watching what the market does to see if we see happen what typically happens in which there is a catch up that happens. And so we've spent most of this video taking a big macro look at the markets and at the charts. I want to talk just for a brief second on the more micro level of the Bitcoin price chart. Over the course of the last couple of weeks, I've discussed, you know, what bear market structures can look like and how these things can play out. Like I mentioned yesterday, I was watching YouTube videos. I was cruising Twitter. I was doing all different types of things because it takes, you know, 12 hours to cook a brisket. It's painfully slow, but that's part of the fun of it. You don't know what your end result is going to be until the 12 hours is up. But one of the things I kept noticing on YouTube videos and on Twitter is, you know, the validation price level for Bitcoin. And I wanted to talk about that because we've talked about the structure of Bitcoin and that, you know, hey, I, I sincerely believe the prices are heading down in here in a bear market structure that's where they head down to into the mid to lower 30s the big question is is there going to be somewhat of a pop up happen first and then it heads its way back down but the thing that i keep seeing is that there's this fifty-three thousand dollar validation level that tells everybody that it's okay and everything is going to be fine but the thing that we've talked about over and over again is that the price in this typical structure actually gets itself back up to about fifty-seven thousand dollars before rolling over on itself and heading down into the 30s 
days. And everywhere all over Twitter and in YouTube videos, I keep seeing that $53,000 means it's safe to buy Bitcoin again. But I just wanted to show this to you right here and that I've been consistently saying that, you know, if we pop up, which I don't know if we are, my expectations are we get down in here into the 30s. How we get there is going to be the big challenge. But if we pop up right in here, that is normal that we do something like that in these types of structures. We, we took a look back at Ford just a couple of weeks ago. And that heading back to those price levels is normal right in here. Even right here, just a 50% retracement would get you up there to about 55,500. And then the price can revert down and then start ABCing for a while. Now, historically, it's the ABC structures in here where the altcoin rally can happen. At least that's what happened in 2017 and 2018. So we're kind of all in that pause and wait moment for that to start happening. But a, a thing I kept seeing all over the place is that $53,000 is where all buy orders should be placed. But examples show over and over again that popping popping back up to these price levels before turning over is very, very normal. Um, and even when I kind of play with my Fibonacci's to try to kind of pinpoint how it could play out, and I'll, I'll just put Bitcoin on the screen for now. Uh, even when I see the way the Fibs are reacting at this time, I see reactions going on in here at Fib levels of where breakdowns are happening at. And that this makes a lot of sense for us to head up here and then head down and then head back. So uh, just so you know, as we're in here ranging in here, I don't have any type of validation price levels of where if it crosses over this, everything is safe. If it breaks below here, everything's gloom and doom. My grand idea is that Bitcoin is heading down into the 30,000s and that typically in bear markets and in bearish structures, it's very normal for the market to get tricked over and over again into thinking it's bullish. So in bull markets, people get shaken out because they think it's bearish. And in bear markets, people get shaken in because they think it's bullish. And you know, I, I, I've been around a long time. I've been through the bear markets before. Um, and this structure is just, it's very bearish. A thing we can do for Bitcoin is we can go back and look into what bearish kind of falls looked like and you can see how these structures kind of line up like this, right? And you can just kind of see this is what a bearish structure really looks like. And that while a retracement back to these levels eventually came, should be an equivalent to right over here. You know, even after it fell down here, there was, there was still more working down before it finally got to go back into that retracement right in there, which for Bitcoin back in those times was a retracement back to the 0.618 Fibonacci extension, slightly above halfway between the 618 and the 702. So a ballpark idea of that kind of lines up right there with those fibs getting us right back into these regions right in here. So still looking for those lower 30s and a, a breakup above $53,000 doesn't you know, invalidate or validate anything for me. But I did notice it all over YouTube and all over Twitter yesterday that that is some type of validation point for a lot of people to feel comfortable to buy Bitcoin. Uh, but I thought I would show this to you right here. But either way, looking at the bigger picture, I'm optimistic for what 2022 has to bring. I think it's going to be a crazy year. It might be the year that we get our top in our stock market and in crypto and everything. It could be the big, the big year. But typically when you get to that big pop, it's really exciting before you get there. So that's kind of what I'm looking for heading into 2022. I did a little bit of the micro stuff over there on Bitcoin because this week there is actually only going to be three videos this week. There's going to be one today, Wednesday, and Friday. And it might also be that way next week as well. But it's a little bit of a longer video, more of a macro deep dive. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'm over here trying to figure out the steps next for bcbacker.com. So this course will not be up here for forever. It's had a good run. I'll continue updating it even after enrollment is closed until it seems appropriate. But otherwise, working on stuff moving into 2022. New year, new stuff, trying to figure out the direction. So for the course of the next couple of weeks, it's probably just going to be three videos a day. But it's in order to, for me to figure out how to provide you even more content and better content as we continue into 2022. So on that note, I will wrap this thing up. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you are looking for something to do during that time, you can check out bcbacker.com, and that is a course that I put together. I deep dive into the previous Bitcoin bull runs, the previous altcoin market cycles, the alt seasons. I tie them all together to show how this cryptocurrency market has worked in the past. This is all a series of videos, very similar structure to what my YouTube channel is like, just talking in there and going through things, teaching things, how to set up your own charts, your own indicators, and trading view and CoinTrader Pro. 
I talk about my personal exit plans in here, and I talk a lot about mathematics and percentages because why those are so important to me. Um, I did recently add the Ethereum exit plan part four final update, the blockchain backer exit plan part four progress update. And like I mentioned on Friday, the end of the month came December 31st. I added the market update in there. And that video is 23 minutes long. Bitcoin and Ethereum's 4.236 extension reached the altcoin market's final puzzle piece. You can check out all of this educational content over here on bcbacker.com. You can follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I wanna thank you so much for watching my channel. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick me up, or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.